Hello guys, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Do subscribe my channel if you haven't done it yet. Now let's solve this particular problem from Hibbler Dynamics. And the problem says that when the 5 kg box reaches point A, it has a speed of 10 meters per second. Determine how high the box reaches up the surface before it comes to a stop. Also, what is the resultant normal force on the surface at this point and the acceleration? Neglect friction and the size of the box. So we have to find the normal force on the surface and the acceleration where the box will stop. So let's say that the box stops somewhere here at point C, let's say, let's say that here we have that point where the box stops. So let's say this point is C. So here the velocity at point C will be then it will be equal to zero. So again if we apply the uh, law of conservation of energy between point A and C, so that will be the kinetic energy at point A plus the gravitational potential energy at point A plus the kinetic energy at point C plus the gravitational potential energy at point C. Now the kinetic energy at point A is 1 divided by 2, mass is 5, velocity A at A is 10 which is given. So that is 10 square plus the gravitational potential energy at A. So for gravitational potential energy the x axis is, is the datum line. So this x axis is our datum line. So the box is on the x axis so the gravitational potential energy on the datum line is always equal to 0. And the kinetic energy at point C will be equal to 0 since the box will stop there. So this is also equal to 0 and the gravitational potential energy of the box at point C will be equal to uh, weight times the height from the datum. So the height from the datum is this height. So this is that height h and let's say that this height h is represented by the y coordinate right this is the origin so from the origin this box is at a height of y so i will write that this is v times y and this is positive y remember so the uh, the work is done the, the energy is stored in the box so that is the positive work done so that is uh, weight so weight is 5 multiplied by 9.81 into that y so now this we can find the y from this equation. This 5 will cancel out if we divide both sides of the equation by 5. And similarly, we can write that y will be equal to this uh, This 1 divided by 2 is 0. 0.5. So 0. 0.5 into 10 square is 100 divided by 9.81. So this will give us the y coordinate of the box when it just stops here. There, right? So that is 0. 0.5 into 100 divided by 9.81 so this is 5.10 approximately so y equals to 5.10 meters so this is that maximum height where the box stops right so this was required we were asked to determine how high the box reaches up the surface so this is that height which was required now we, we are uh, again asked to find, determine the resultant normal force. So we have to apply the summation of forces along the normal direction. So we, we have to consider uh, the normal and tangential coordinates at point C. So at point C, the normal, uh, the normal axis is, is going to act towards the towards the radius of curvature so this will be our normal direction like this and the tangential direction is going to act perpendicular in the norm to, to the normal and in the direction of the increasing velocity so this is the tangential direction now the weight is going to act vertically downward so we will have the weight somewhere here this is that weight which is 5 times 9.81 and we want to find the angle of the tangent with the with the horizontal right so the tangent with the path right so the tangent with the path is at point c will be this line 
and let's say if I draw a horizontal line here and if I draw a vertical line here so we have this uh, right angle triangle and let's say that the tangent is making some angle theta so we can find this angle theta if we apply tan theta so we can write that tan theta and this will be equal to this will be the change in y this is the change in y and this is the change in x so tan theta is dy by dx and similarly we can find theta if we if we find this dy by dx value at uh, y equals to 5.10 so dy by dx will be equal this theta will be equal to tan inverse dy by dx value dy by dx value so we have to find dy by dx value when y equals to 5.10 now from this equation we can write y in terms of x so we can say that x to the power 1 divided by 2 plus y to the power 1 divided by 2 this is equal to 3 and similarly we can write that y to the power 1 divided by 2 this is equal to 3 minus x to the power 1 divided by 2 and similarly uh, we can write that if we take squares on both sides of so this y will be equal to 3 minus x to the power 1 divided by 2 whole square so this is y equals to this similarly uh, we if i take the derivative so that will be dy by dx and the derivative of this will be 2 into 3 minus x to the power 1 divided by 2 and then the derivative of this inside brackets that is 0 minus 1 divided by 2 x to the power 1 divided by 2 minus 1 so that is minus 1 divided by 2 so this will be and now this 2 is cancelled out so we are left with this and this is minus right so now we can write this is dy by dx so this is minus 1 so now we can write this is minus 3 minus x to the power 1 divided by 2 and we can bring this x to the power minus 1 divided by 2 into the denominator so the power will become positive and if I multiply this minus sign inside, so this will become minus 3 and plus. And similarly, we can write this as dy by dx. And we can divide, we can write this like this. This is x to the power 1 divided by 2 plus x to the power 1 divided by 2 divided by x to the power 1 divided. So this will become 1. So this is like this. Or we can say that this is 1 minus 3 x to the power minus 1 divided by 2 if I bring this again to the numerator so we will have the equation for the first derivative dy by dx like this and now we want to find dy by dx when y equals to 5.10 so we have to find the x value when y equals to 5.10 so we can put the y value in this equation so from this equation we can write that x to the power 1 divided by 2 is 3 minus y to the power 1 divided by 2 and if we take square then we will be able to find that x value so this is 3 minus y value is 5.10 to the power 1 divided by 2 and square so this will give us the x value so this is 3 3 minus 5.10 to the power 1 divided by 2 and this is squared so this gives us 0 0.55 so 0 0.55 meters so this is the x value now we want to find dy by dx value when since this dy by dx is a function of x so when x is equal to 0 0.55 we want to find this dy by dx value so we have to put this x value in this equation so this is dy by dx value this is 1 minus 3 and 0 0.55 to the power minus 1 divided by 2 so this is 1 minus 3 into 0 0.55 to the power uh, minus 1 divided by 2 this gives us minus 3.05 minus 3.05 and similarly here we can find theta so theta will be equal to 10 inverse 
minus 3.04 this is approximately 3.05 3.05 so this is so 10 inverse shift 10 inverse minus 3.05 this gives us minus 71.85 so theta equals to minus 71.85 degrees so now this uh, tangent to the path at point c is making 71.85 degree angle so now as we can see that if we extend the line of action of this weight so it is going to make 90 degree with this line and the normal is perpendicular with this line with the tangent so if the angle between these two is theta then weight is also making that same angle theta here with the normal axis so we got that angle of the weight with the normal axis which is equal to 71.85 degrees now the normal force of the surface is going to act in the positive normal direction this will be the the force of the surface on the box and if we resolve this weight into its component so it will have one component which is going to act in this direction and this one will be the cost component so we can say this is 5 into 9.81 cos of 71.85 so now we, we want to find this normal force so we have to apply the summation of forces along the normal direction and that is always equal to m a n and which will be equal to m v c square divided by the radius of curvature at c so as we know that at c when the box reaches here it comes to rest so velocity is equals to zero so if the velocity is equal to zero this will be equal to zero so wherever the box stops the summation of force in the normal direction becomes equal and their sum is equal to zero so now we can write that this n is acting in the positive n direction so i will write plus n minus the cost component of the weight which is 5 into 9.81 cos of 71.85 and this is equal to zero and if I bring this to the other side of the equation, so we will have n equal to the cos component of the weight in the normal direction. So that is 5 into 9.81 into cos of 71.85. This gives us n value which is 57, 15.27 or we can say that this is 15.28 Newton. So this is that resultant normal force which the surface is going to apply where the box stops and then we were asked to find the acceleration so from here when the velocity at point c is equal to zero so a n is equals to zero a n is equal to zero so we have to find the tangential acceleration so for tangential acceleration we have to apply the summation of forces along the tangential axis so that will be equal to m a t and in the tangential direction we will have the weight component in this direction this one will be the sine component and there is no other component right so uh, we can write that this sine component is acting in the negative tangential direction so that is minus 5 into 9.81 sine of 71.85 and this will be equal to the mass which is 5 and the tangential acceleration so dividing both sides by mass so the tangential acceleration is equal to this thing which is 9.81 minus 9.81 sine of 71.85 and this gives us the tangential acceleration equals to minus 9.3 32 meter per second squared and the minus sign tells us that the the box is deaccelerating the velocity magnitude is decreasing when it is going from a to c and similarly if you want to find the resultant acceleration so the resultant acceleration will be equal to a n square plus a t square under the square root and similarly a n is uh, a n is 0 so a is the resultant magnitude a, a is equal to a t which is equal to 9.32 meter per second square 
So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe my channel if you haven't.